Welcome back to my channel, The Sarthak Show, where we discuss about tech, career, product, and life. And today we have a very special guest with, guest with us, Pranav. He is working as a SD two at Microsoft right now, uh, but he has a lot of different experiences from different fields and industries, different MNCs as well. So today we will deep dive into his story and learn more about his uh, life experiences, professional experiences, and learning so far. Uh, we will also learn about uh, what are the stark differences that we can observe from different companies, how the work culture happens, or maybe changes from tech stacks or the hiring processes. And then we will also deep dive into what his job role is all about. Maybe some some tidbits about data engineering, data science, and how do you prepare for those kinds of role? What are the things that are required in that domain? How do you prepare for these kinds of interviews and so on and so forth? So stay tuned till the end of this video to learn all of these th different things. And thank you so much, Pranav, for joining in for this podcast. Uh, really looking forward to learn from your story and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sarthak, for giving me the opportunity to come here. And thank you for your valuable time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I definitely uh, understand and uh, want to. I'm like too excited to ask a lot of different questions because you have worked at companies like PayPal, Oracle, and now you're working at Microsoft. Uh, so. Starting with the differences part itself, or maybe your journey itself. Uh, how did these journeys started? Like, uh, what was the difference that you faced while applying for these companies, or maybe recruiter reached out to you, or do you apply via referral or something? Okay, so basically, like I'll start from the beginning itself when I was in college. Uh, so basically, what happened is like I was never interested to go into engineering at all. So it was kind of a like a second option for me. Basically, like I, I even took uh, like uh, admission in a uh, Delhi college. So basically, I come from USIT, so Delhi government college in uh, in the prestige university. So basically, when uh, like the main motive was uh, to prepare for medical examination and to drop a year. Mm -hmm. So un unfortunately, that did not happen. And uh, the thing is, like I landed in my second year, and I was like clueless. So where to start and what to do and like what to do next now. So. Mm -hmm. Many of my friends were work, like into competitive programming at that time in my college. So I took a hostel there. So you can say that the hostel culture is like that. So many people are doing, you can say that people form groups, right? If you are doing computer uh, competitive programming, so it will be, you are in, <laughs> you are, if you're not, so then you're out. So it was a very good culture. So mm -hmm. I tried my hands on that. And fortunately I was able to secure good ranks all over in my like stint in competitive programming. So I reached till five star in Code Chef and candidate master in Code Forces. Other than that, yeah. So then, obviously, like solving problems always interested me, mm -hmm. and then I thought that like why not apply for companies, right? So after working for like I got two placement offers with uh, in my campus. At that time, our college was not like uh, you can say that offering the best in class placements uh, like services that are there, right? So mm -hmm. right now the story is completely changed. By the way. So the thing is like that time, like uh, I got a pool campus placement of in industry Valley partners as a software engineer. So it is a product based company that is there. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, I have second offer I got from Nagaro. So Nagaro is a kind of a service based organization that is there. Right. Okay. So initially I went with IVP and industry Valley partners and uh, like kind of a pre intern there before mm -hmm. converting into a full time job. I was doing a pre internship for four months and then two months of full actor actual job. So there I did not like it after six months that I thought that like, why not? So basically it was my personal choice because the company was small and it was working in very niche technologies, which was like not in alignment to my like aspirations as go going forward in my career. So mm -hmm. I decided that like, I need to check, I need to move out. I need to like uh, move to a different organization at that time. Only option was Nagaro. So I moved from a product based company to service based company. Rarely people do that. Yes, but the other thing is like then after working for Nagaro with Nagaro for 1.6 years, right? It was a, it was a wonderful experience to be honest. I got to visit uh, like two countries also. I visited uh, like Indonesia. I visited Russia also for uh, like you can say two weeks. So it was a very wonderful experience I had. So there I learned niche skills on machine learning and data engineering. Okay. So an ample time was there with me to for uh, like preparing for like all the companies that are there, right? Cracking the interview. 
so firstly like uh, after working with negaro for 1.6 kind of years so 1.5 years so then i started to look introspect and then i started like my journey that like what to do next what uh, what is there for me right so then i tried my hands in the market and i was able to secure you can say like uh, 15 20 companies that are there multiple job offers mm-hmm. out of that the best scenario was with paypal because paypal was giving me kind of a mid senior role that is a sg2 role that is there and mm-hmm. nobody gets it usually at 1.8 or 1.6 years of experience that is the it i was kind of early in that mm-hmm. and why did it happen because like i was very fit my uh, like you can say that like my interview rounds went very well so in total there you can say that uh, like there were multiple rounds for the company and then i was able to get good in that so mm-hmm. that is where it all began like i started my like journey with paypal as a like sg2 and then basically yeah so that is the thing so yeah, i think a very wonderful journey all together with a lot of hoops and things and uh, to be honest, I find it rare when a person moves from product-based to a service-based firm. Uh, I also did myself in my internship. I was working at a product-based firm and then uh, my first job was at a service-based firm because I wanted to take a taste of it uh, in different sense and everything. And both of the learnings were uh, amazing and everything uh, went great. So, uh, yes. and, and then you mentioned that uh, at your experience, it, was, it is slightly difficult to get SD2 with uh, so I'm sure you must have rocked your interviews and everything uh, and wanted to know more about how that they went. How was your uh, interview process and everything at PayPal? Got it. So basically like uh, uh, when I was like giving my interview, so basically there are six rounds in PayPal. Firstly is a test that uh, like you have to give mm-hmm. and uh, like it's a hacker rank based test in which like three questions you can expect. And two questions minimum is the cutoff that you have to do. So questions are like, you can say easy, medium to hard also. So a variety of questions you can expect. And then after that, like you have uh, like uh, three interviews in data structures and algorithms. So completely focus on DSA. It is nothing like uh, low level design, like high level design. And it's it's kind of every round is an elimination based round. So as, as because like I was holding other offers also. So I conveyed the same to the recruiter that uh, like if you could just like fast forward the process, mm-hmm. like, uh, so two, two rounds in one day I used to give. So what happened is like first round is data success and algorithm. So you can expect like uh, medium hard questions. So in interviews, the question level like increases. And mm-hmm. then after three rounds of DSA, then there is a, like a high level design round and a low level design round separate that is separate. So high level mm-hmm. design round is taken by another engineering manager, mm-hmm. right? So, and a low level design round is taken by a senior engineering, engineering lead where they test to like, where the, like the major criteria for evaluation is, you can say that your uh, implementation skills, right. And your higher order thinking skills, that is the major like area of expertise. Then after that, you have an interaction with, uh, like either the director of engineering or the engineering manager. So in, in, in my case, it happened, like I, I had an interaction with both of them. So mm-hmm. both of them were present on the same call and yeah, I was not expecting. And then, yeah, so it was very well. So it went well. And they also told me that you are early in your SD2 career. So take it like that. So basically you have to learn consistently and obviously you need to do it also and deliver also by the same time, because the expectation is also there, right? So right. you are kind of an armed senior role. So you have to guide the juniors also, right? Mm-hmm. So that is the major thing that, that happened. And yeah, so I started with that. Yeah, I think uh, amazing. And what I get to know is like PayPal have a very rigorous interview process, like six rounds and uh, rarely companies ask for two different system design rounds where HLD and LLD are discussed separately, but they have it. And then most of the questions were, as you mentioned, are medium to hard. So uh, DSA was also on another level. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, at the end of the day, it was all worth it. You cracked all the rounds and you cracked the mid senior position, uh, with, I, I think it's a, it's a, uh, a remark in itself that you uh, did this in a uh, minimum number of experience, like uh, at a very, uh, a small experience. So yeah, it's, it's great though. How did the journey transform from PayPal to Oracle? Uh, like, uh, how did you apply there and what was the motivation to switch and, uh, how did things happen? Got it. So basically in PayPal, like uh, when I went there, so basically we were working in kind of a, you can say that uh, it's a team that interacts with multiple teams. 
Okay. Basically, we were working in kind of a release engineering group. So mm-hmm. where like all the PayPal releases would be going to our team. So okay. we had to interact with, you can say it's a common team for every team that is working in PayPal. Mm-hmm. So everybody would interact with us and it was kind of a very cumbersome process that we have developed, right? We will be up, like approving everybody's releases, code releases or the releases of that is there. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a very, like you can say very special, uh, uh, like focused domain. Mm-hmm. So you can say that you are very bound to like only one domain that is focusing on the releases and the checks that are there. Is it of the standard or not? So we had, you can say seven to eight products in that. So in that domain only that were doing that. So I was made the point of contact or like the responsibility was given for, to me for two products where like we had, you can say two software engineers on one product, uh, like who were under me and like one in another product. Okay. So the major task was to like look uh, and like look into that product and you will be the point of contact. So you have to participate in every discussion that is their high level de- design discussion with every other team, how they will implement it because it is a common thing across all the paper. Right. right. So the thing is like what I, what I learned uh, after working after some time that it is a very niche domain that I'm working on. And uh, like it is, it was very good. It involved like various technologies, like all the good technologies, such as we have, I was working in Golang, I was working in React, I was working in Angular also, I was working in uh, Kubernetes, Docker, everything was there. Node.js was also there. Right? Mm-hmm. It was a very, it was a full stack role. So on the other hand, it was a very like wide role that is there. Okay. So, but after working for some time, I realized that the domain that I'm gaining experience into is not what I aspired for. Okay. Because I wanted to go into data sciences or data engineering or wanted to solve problems in that domain. Mm-hmm. So, and this domain is very niche domain. So it's kind of release engineering. So uh, then I decided to move out and think outside because like I like uh, wanted to explore myself also going forward. Mm-hmm. Obviously at some point of time you need to, you take that decision to explore yourself, right? Right. So then like after that, I thought that uh, I had skills, I had developed our skills in distributed computing and uh, big data was my forte only. Okay. So I, what I did is like, um, obviously when you are into a product based company, so you have connections right in the on LinkedIn. So people reach out to you, tend to reach out to you very often that are you interested We are hiring for this, this. So I saw an opportunity in Oracle. Mm -hmm. I got Amazon also, but, uh, and that time when I was switching, so at that time I got eight offers that included, uh, VMware, uh, Cisco, Nutanix, uh, this, uh, what is this Amazon AWS and, Mm -hmm. uh, like OCI Oracle cloud infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So Microsoft was also there, but Microsoft (laughs) was offering SD one that time I was very frustrated with that. Mm -hmm. So what happened is like, I, uh, like, uh, the opportunity that I got in Oracle, right. It was a very unique opportunity. Basically they were developing a product from scratch mm-hmm. and which would be, you can say, which is, which is kind of S3 only for Amazon. Okay. So that was the high level impact of that product. And I thought that if I want to invest my time and future into that, why not do it? So that is the major thing that I wanted to do and wanted to progress into. So I thought that why not take this opportunity and uh, yeah, it was a very good opportunity and good move by me at that time. Mm-hmm. That I did, I, I remember that. So yeah, that yeah. is how I landed into Oracle. That is how Oracle in, came into picture. Yeah, I think uh, again, uh, wonderful and a bump uh, uh, with a roller coaster ride in terms of career path. Uh, and I agree that is so true that uh, you were experiencing a lot of different things, but uh, instead having like a mix of all the technologies, you wanted to focus something which is uh, you which you are passionate about and you want to explore. Thus, you start looking out for that. And again, kudos to you for cracking all those eight offers with amazing firms and technology uh, companies out there. So yeah, but again, uh, as you mentioned that looking for a company, which is creating like a, a product from scratch and gaining that experience, how these things work and how to make this scalable uh, in terms of that. Uh, and and definitely you, as you mentioned that it was the right choice at that moment and you took it. Um, so how did uh, that turned out to be working at Oracle and then how did it shape your career path to be working at Microsoft? So actually it was a very nice experience all around. Mm-hmm. So to be honest, like uh, I was, I enjoyed my time <laughs> there at Oracle. 
and i had the leisure of very good mentors very good mentors were there who were in the industry for you can say 10 15 in 20 years okay. and my peers were very good and supportive and my like manager or director was very supportive for my growth mm-hmm. so there like i i delivered very high impacting work and mm-hmm. there like i got to play with advanced data structures such right. as uh, like avl trees right and uh, like segment trees i was i used to imagine that when i will like get the opportunity to implement it but in mm-hmm. the end like i made a generic feature which is all now also used in oci it's like oci tri okay. so which is a implementation of avl tree and segment tree and it's a tri only okay. so there like i like i got to work on that and then it was kind of a tool that now will be used by like sorry it is kind of a product that is that will be used by million of com- sorry hundreds of, hundreds of com- companies million of developers will be using that product so mm-hmm. i am uh, like i i feel that i made a contribution a significant contribution mm-hmm. to that and yeah so basically we what we were doing we were doing building a data warehouse so it's okay. like uh, every type of analytical data or any type of data you can store it and oci will be the point of contact so secure data so oracle is known for its security at each layer Okay. so we were making the like security at even the row column any type of thing we were making it secure the data is very secure you cannot hack or crack anything anything out of that and mm-hmm. it's a like a queryable data you like one tb of data could be queried very easily okay so i had the experience of working with every different team ui team like sorry front end team big data team the process engineering team and people were very good people were you can say seniors were kind of open source contributors in kafka or sorry or in in the the apache foundation or the things that are there oh, so i tend to develop a like a very good relation even nowadays also i tend to seek advice from them mm-hmm. so it was a very nice experience to be honest so that is the thing that is the highlight yeah i think again uh uh so uh very rare people get to really implement their dsa learnings into their product itself because most of the time what you learn as part of your competitive coding like as you mentioned segment trees avl trees uh people don't get to implement them but uh you were the lucky one who got to implement that as well so yeah uh people out there who are listening in uh should understand that all the things that are part of dsa that are being asked in your uh, interviews and everything you might not get to implement it on day one but there will be some time where you get to uh, use that kind of knowledge and that will be helpful for you yeah and as you mentioned there there were uh, amazing seniors and mentors they were working at uh, different things and different and they were also open source contributors uh, and good glad to know that but how this thing progressed towards i would say your microsoft journey where you are today and uh, how how did you apply towards microsoft so it's a very funny story to be honest mm-hmm. so that is the thing so the thing is like uh, i was working very comfortably in oracle mm-hmm. and uh, the thing is like two things happened mm-hmm. so firstly i got google as a l3 role okay. and the second thing is like i got fed up with bangalore location so these are very controversial things to talk <laughs> about firstly so that uh, like i planned like i i planned it you can say for the future only mm-hmm. so firstly like all the things were against me these two things are only against me only so mm-hmm. basically what happened is like i was uh, like giving the interviews for google right mm-hmm. so i was able to crack a like a l3 role l3 uh, role at google so l3 is a entry level software engineer role right mm-hmm. so even like the like the difference C- ctc was very different like you can say that around 20, 20 30 lakhs difference was coming for one year okay even even because of even after that also i was ready to quit my job and work for google because it google obvious right right exactly so what happened is like obviously you cannot rely on one offer right mm-hmm. and then i like started interviewing with microsoft also because mm-hmm. microsoft also like many of my friends said that you can also try from ms mm-hmm. right because like noida is there right noida option is there so it's close to my home right? mm-hmm. 30 minutes only from okay. my home so what happened is like microsoft journey was very is a very like is also a roller coaster ride in itself so actually what happened is like i gave 20 to 25 interviews with microsoft and got into four teams right okay. so what happened is like 
like two teams were from Hyderabad and one team was from Bangalore and one team was from Noida. Okay. Right? So the thing is like at one point of time the HR also scolded me that uh, like you cannot you cannot progress like this the Microsoft HR and this is a senior HR. Mm-hmm. So we will blacklist you and uh, this is not the way appropriate way that you are doing. It's not because you add, see what happens in Microsoft is like uh, you have you are interviewing for a team. Right. Okay. If you get rejected by that team, you can apply to any other team, right. but you cannot apply to the same team after six months. Right. Whereas in Amazon, that the thing is like if you get rejected from Amazon, you are bound to not apply to Amazon after six months. Right. right. You cannot apply after six months. You can only apply sorry after six months. That is there. Similar with Google. See, Google has this other thing that if you get rejected from the on-site interviews, right? Uh, there is there is one uh, like screening round, and then there are on-site interviews. So if you get rejected after the on-site interviews, one year you have to wait, and okay. if you get rejected in the screening, six months you have to wait. Okay. So bifurcations are there. So based on Google, I resigned from Oracle, and Oracle has a notice period of one month. Mm-hmm. So in that one month, Microsoft four teams happened. So the mm-hmm. thing is like. I chose like Microsoft because of location, to mm-hmm. be honest, because I plan to now, because I've already have made like two switches in one year mm-hmm. in uh, that thing. And the other thing is like, obviously Microsoft is also very good and it offered me a, like a, you can say comparable role also, the, mm-hmm. the hikes and all the salaries were also good. And it's kind of a mid senior role again, SD2, L61, right. sorry, L62. So the thing is like, that is the only point of my consideration location was in my favor the the team was very the team and the manager also interacted with me and i also told him the situation so he was very chill super chill so he's a very wonderful guy also he's very understanding mm-hmm. he understands my like thing that is there and yeah because why i why i chose like to live near my home because like i had recently in that time i went under a like a surgery i used to run a lot Okay. So I had a knee surgery, so which needed me to stay at, like I needed to recover because there are certain exercises and you need to visit the doctor here and there, right? Mm-hmm. So it was, it takes around one to two years to heal the, uh, uh, like the knee that is there. Okay. So that's where like, uh, like I decided to like stay in my hometown only. I had requested this to Oracle also, but unfortunately, no, nothing could be made out of that. Mm-hmm. So they were only preferring for Bangalore and other locations, even though Oracle has an office in Noida, but why didn't it go through? I am also not sure, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, that is the whole journey where like how I landed up into Microsoft <laughs> and it's a very controversial thing also. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, uh, it's, it's a very, very rare story that uh, how things happened and how things change. Uh, you had a different motivation altogether. You applied for a different logic and you gave a resignation for a different company and altogether changed for a different company and landed at a different position. Uh, but one of the most interesting thing that played out was like, you gave 25 interviews at Microsoft. Like, uh, I think that should be a peak uh, in terms of their history as well. Uh, like you get 25 interviews. That is a very huge amount and how you prepare during your notice period while w- working for the company, but also giving those interviews at the right time and then uh, getting selected for them and then deciding for which makes more sense to you. And also I think one of the learnings that is for audience is that uh, health is also a primary aspect of it. Uh, when you are working, you should look out for opportunities that are not just uh, uh, for the sake of the, um, I would say, uh, amount or something like that. You should also look for your health or your own uh, growth and everything. So yeah, I think again, a very wonderful decision that you made and, uh, and now you're working in this domain and before moving into and, de- uh, get, getting a deep dive into your working, uh, uh, working projects and everything, how do you work at, uh, data engineering? Uh, I just wanted to mention all the folks listening in that, uh, Newton school has also started their own full stack development course. If you guys are interested, you can join that. They are launching new courses every month and you can check that out. Uh, in the description box below, there's a link where they have mentioned what are the course uh, course all about, what are the things that you will learn, what are the projects that you will make, very interesting projects. And the best part is that it's a zero fee upfront course, so that you, you don't have to pay anything uh, before joining, uh, before getting a job offer. And also, uh, an uh, add-on would be that Newton School will help you get placed at, comp- at startups and MNCs and get you amazing job offers. So you can check that uh, link in the description box below. 
and yeah moving on so pranav uh, since you have a very extensive experience in the data engineering and data science part of it i uh, wanted to know what is this domain all about and uh, how things work in this domain